What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've made my way down to Audi Greenville where we're gonna take a look at the all new 2020 Audi S7. Huge thanks to them for providing this car for me today. Definitely check out their website. That will be down in the description below. This model here is finished off in Ibis white. It has an MSRP just over $96,000. It's basically fully loaded as you'll see in today's video. And also don't forget for January, we are giving away a GoPro. More details on the giveaway will be later in this video. Underneath the hood of the 2020 S7, this has a completely new engine. The previous generation had a four liter twin turbo V8. This has a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6. It also has a 48 volt hybrid system along with an electronic supercharger as well. This makes 36 more horsepower than the V8, so it's a lighter engine and more efficient. This is also paired to an eight speed Tiptronic automatic transmission and you can shift using paddle shifters on the steering wheel. This engine produces 444 horsepower and 443 pound feet of torque. It is all wheel drive. This vehicle weighs around 4,600 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds with a top speed of 155 miles an hour. And with a fuel capacity of 19.3 gallons, you can expect to see 18 miles per gallon in the city and 28 on the highway. This has an overall wheelbase of 115.3 inches. Its length measures 196. The overall width is 83.4 inches and it has a height of 55.8 inches. Starting up front on the 2020 S7, I think the coolest feature is when you walk up to the vehicle, you double tap on the unlock button, the lights kind of do a little dance for you, showing you that you're walking up to your vehicle, especially at nighttime, you'll be able to pick it out versus other vehicles around you, and they stay on for a little bit of time, so that is pretty cool. This also has HD matrix LED headlights, along with daytime running lights as well. As we make our way to the center grille, this is traditional for Audis. It's a single frame, finished off in gloss black around the trim pieces. You can see there's a sensor on both sides as well, along with an additional one up on the windshield. You have the chrome Audi badge in the center, along with a forward-facing camera. There's six parking sensors that run throughout the front bumper as well. You can see all of the gloss black in the center here, along with down on the lower section of the bumper. And then there's also inlets on each side to help provide more cooling to the engine, along with more black trim pieces on each side as well. And then as we make our way to the hood, you can see there's four distinctive lines kind of all coming down to a point, which is really nice to see. Gives it a really great look. Moving on to the side of the 2020 S7, this is where we get to see all of the options that are added on to this particular model. Starting off with the black optics package that blacks out a lot of the trim pieces like you saw in the lower section of the front bumper. We have the power folding side mirrors that are finished off in gloss black. They're heated and feature the integrated turn signal. And then you can see all of the trim around the windows as well. This also has the S Sport package, which gives you that dynamic steering, as I already mentioned. And it gives you the red calipers, both in the front and the back. Along with these 21 inch wheels, they have a five V-spoke pattern to them. A two-tone finish as well gives them a really nice look. Overall, the side profile of this vehicle has a nice look to it, especially with the hatchback design, just gives it a very nice flowing shape to it. You can see there's some distinct lines in the side as well. One just under the mirror here, it runs all the way through the door handles and kind of divides in the back here to another line just underneath the gas cap. And then you have a nice flowing design and lines down at the bottom section. And finishing up on the 2020 S7, we'll start off with the LED taillights and the LED turn signals. You can see they have a nice animation to them. They start from the center of the vehicle and work their way out, just gives it a really nice look. And the fact that this bar runs through the entire rear trunk lid here, just finishes off the car nicely with that. This has your stand-up backup camera with parking sensors. There's really clean lines in the back here. Then as we move our way down to the bottom, you can see little contours in the diffuser there. And then as part of the package, this does come with the sports exhaust. That's gonna finish it up for the exterior walk around on the 2020 S7. Comment down below, what do you think of the styling of this particular model? I really like it with the black optics package. It makes it very subtle. It's white with black accents everywhere, so it doesn't stick out, but it still has a nice clean design to it as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at the interior. Now I have the vehicle locked and the key in my pocket. I'll just place my hand on the door handle and it will automatically unlock. Starting off on the door panel, you can automatically tell that the interior of this vehicle is top notch. There's Alcantara on the back side here above your leather armrest with silver stitching that runs the entire length. There's wood trim above that with even more brushed aluminum. You'll find it on the release handle, on the lock and unlock switches. There's two memory seating adjustments as well, of course finish off in aluminum. 
This has a 16 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. You have plenty of storage space in the lower section of the door along with an electronic button for the rear hatch. You have all of your adjustments for the side mirrors. Your window controls are even finished off in aluminum buttons as well. Now that we're behind the seat of the 2020 S7, let's start off with these Valcona leather seats. They have great bolsters to them. You can see the attention to detail with the stitching that runs down them. The S badge is in the top here. These have a 12-way adjustability along with four-way lumbar support. You can even move the front section of the seat forwards and backwards if you would like to. As we move to the steering wheel now, that is the next thing that is in a great spot. You have paddle shifters on each side so you can row through the gears if you'd like to. It's finished off with solid leather on the top and bottom, perforated to the sides along with more of that silver stitching. Over to the left side, you have a very usable storage compartment. I'm not sure what you would put back here, but it's pretty much my whole forearm that can fit in there. So if you have an item that you need to put down there, you can easily hide it away. You have all of your controls for the lights along with more trim pieces, more brushed aluminum, and one air vent. So going back to the gauge cluster here, you can see it's all digital. This is Audi's virtual cockpit. It's about 12.3 inches. Over to the left side, you can see the engine temperature. The fuel gauge is on the far right. Right now, you can see the navigation is in the center. You have your tack on the left and speedometer on the right side. Using these buttons on the left side of the steering wheel, we can scroll through and look at all of your other vital information. So you have your long and short term memory. You have your energy consumption along with your driver assistance and the speed limit as well. Then we can scroll over to your radio. You have your phone when that is paired and we're back to the navigation. If you also click on this view button, we can hide the tack and speedometer and you can view everything full screen. So you can see just how large the nav is. You can use the rotary dial to scroll in and out. So these graphics are very crystal clear and it allows you to see pretty much the entire road in front of you. We can scroll over again and look at all the other vital information. And then over to the right side is all of your Bluetooth. You have a customizable button. So if I push on that, you can have it to your voice guidance, your day and night map lights. You can configure it how you would like to. You have your volume and tuning for the radio. As I mentioned earlier, the entire dash is covered in leather and stitching. You can see that little spot there is for the heads up display. As we make our way to the center, you'll see two air vents along with more of the wood trim and brushed aluminum. And this top screen here measures 10.1 inches. You have a lot of information that you can go through. As you can see, there's the radio, media, your phone and navigation. If we click on navigation, you can have it pull up here. You can swipe over to some other information. If we go into vehicle, you can select what you'd like the vehicle to be in as far as comfort wise. You have lighting and visibility, seats that you can go into, you can go into the climate controls. On the left side, these are all of your presets basically. So you saw home at the top there. You have your radio, music, phone, and navigation. And then down below, you have a third screen. This one measures just over eight inches. You do have a fixed row of buttons at the top. You have your engine start stop feature. This button here will minimize or maximize your climate control buttons. You have a garage door button, the active rear spoiler button, along with being able to shut the upper screen off. But moving back to all of the controls here, very easy to go through. You have your heated seats for driver and passenger along with your heated steering wheel again. If you push on these three buttons in the center, that will bring up functions for the rear. You can see that up top. You can go to the rear and adjust everything there. You have your drive select, so you can go through what I showed earlier. You have your traction control, hazards, and some other recirc buttons. Moving behind that, you have the engine start stop button on the left side. We have the parking sensors and camera button right there. So if I pull that up, right now we're looking at the forward facing camera with the top down view on the right side. We can click on this here and control the different angles. So now we have a wide angle with lines in the front. You can see basically just the entire vehicle right now. We have the backup camera with the wide angle backup camera. You can see where the front wheels are placed and where the rear wheels are placed. And then clicking on 3D, we can scroll exactly around this and see everything around the vehicle. You can see my Tacoma right there off into the distance. Very cool, the graphics on that. That is exactly what my truck looks like right there. So that is awesome to see. You have this button over here, which is your driver assistance. You can control that basically basic, individual, and maximum. Then you have your power and volume off to the right. Moving behind that, we have the shifter. The trigger on the left side is how you will engage it. We can go all the way up for reverse. You'll see the backup camera light up. All the way back is into drive and you can pop it over into manual mode. And then putting it into park, you just push on the P. It'll automatically go to the center position and you are all set from there. Behind that, we have the electronic parking brake along with two cup holders and a 12 volt. As we make our way to the center, you can see all the leather and stitching on the armrest. 
we go ahead and open that up, you'll see two USBs in the back along with a wireless port. And I like the fact that this will stay in whatever position you have. So there's some tension to it. It won't just slam closed, which is very nice to see. And then moving over to the glove box, you'll see you have plenty of space for anything that you need to place down there. We'll take one last look at these seats. Very nice stitching and leather. And then as we make our way up to the top, this has a sunroof. All of those controls are up in the center along with all of your dome lights. All right, so now making our way to the back seats in the 2020 S7. Very nice attention to detail on the leather, just like you would find up front. You have all the stitching, very nice comfortable bolsters. They're not too aggressive for a back seat, uh, but they give you a little bit of support. As we look at the center armrest here, you'll see that there's a little bit of storage on the back side of it. And then in the front, you'll see two cup holders. So you have two cup holders for the rear passengers. And then what we can do is pull up underneath this headrest and fold this seat down. So there's a 40-20-40 split if you need anything to go through and have two additional passengers. As far as the overall legroom and headroom goes, I have the front seat set at my height, 5'10". My shoes are nicely underneath the seat and I have about four or five inches in front of my knees. And then I have about an inch or two above my head. So I would say with the design of this vehicle, how the roof kind of slants back, you still have additional headroom in the back. So it's not too tight or anything like that. You can definitely be back here. As we move to the controls for the back seats, these are heated seats, so you have the option to do that. You have all of your temperature controls. You can just swipe on these up and down along with your fan speed. And then of course, turning on the heated seats where you'd like the air to go. This vehicle has a four zone climate control system. So the back passengers get their own, which is really nice to see. There are two USBs and a 12 volt as well. You have plenty of visibility out of the back glass. There is even a shade that you can adjust manually, just pulling that up. We can put that into place if you wanna block any of the sun. And last up, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the rear storage space. So I can just push on an electronic button up underneath Audi. It will automatically open up. With the hatchback style design, there is plenty of space in the back. Even with all the seats folded down, that just opens it up for much more items that you can place in the back. You do have the option to remove this, so if you need that additional space, you can easily take that out. You have a compartment over to the left side with a net. There's also a tie down net in the center. This does have a spare tire up underneath. All right, so now it's time to get the 2020 S7 out on the road. One thing that I didn't mention earlier is that this has soft closing doors. So if you accidentally forget to close it all the way and you just kind of get it locked, it will automatically do it for you. So that is nice to see. You don't have to open the door and slam it again, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get this out on the road now. The first thing that I'll go over while we're still in the parking lot here is just the general visibility. I like the hatchback design. I've always been a fan of that. Not only is it practical for extra storage space, but it does give you pretty good visibility. There's hardly any blind spots because the pillars back there are very small. So even over my left shoulder there, a quick look, I can easily see back that way. And then the glass on the back is obviously large since it, since it has that hatchback style to it. It's just such a premium feeling vehicle. It has pretty much all of the options you would want in an S7, but the interior, no matter what interior you get, they are all just gonna look very, very nice. The aluminum, the wood, the leather, it just gives it a really nice feel. If you're looking for a comfortable daily driver, but you don't want like the sportiness to it, if you went with the RS7, that's a little bit more raw feeling. You just want something that's comfortable, you can drive every day. The S7 is definitely a great option. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna use the paddle shifters now. Wow. So it's still pretty quick. It's not very loud on the outside, but this does have extra insulation to keep it very quiet on the inside. So there's hardly any wind noise. There's no road noise. Right now I am in dynamic mode. So you can definitely feel the bumps a good bit, but if I go ahead and put it into comfort now, hopefully that camera is shaking less. It's absorbing all of the bumps very well. Uh, for the sake of the video, I'll keep it in comfort mode. But dynamic, it's nothing harsh, it's not crazy. I'll go ahead and switch back to it real quick. You can feel the whole car just shift into, like it lowers down a little bit, it gets nice and tight for turns or back roads or something like that. You still have the performance aspect to be able to do that. It's just not as raw feeling as an RS7 would be, for example. Let's go ahead, I'm using the paddle shifters. Go down to second. So we're in dynamic mode. Wow. You still have that performance. It's awesome to see that. Give it a little bit of gas in automatic mode. Wow. 
<laughs> it's a fast car. It's quick. It's it's a fun daily. I could see this being a really useful daily driver. You want a, a little bit extra than just a normal sedan, but you don't want to go too raw and just make it that next step. So this is a nice in-between. Has everything that you need. It's a very nice car to drive. It's super comfortable. I love these seats. Hopefully you guys can hear that exhaust just a little bit. It has a good tone to it but it's not overly loud at the same time. You can hear that. Wow. Coming around that turn there, there is so much, uh, the, the vehicle is so planted, I should say. There's no body roll, it's so direct, and I'm in comfort mode right now. The, the paddles are responsive. As soon as you hit them, you're into that next gear, both on the downshifts and the upshifts and the brakes again. That That is pretty cool. For a vehicle like this, you have all the luxuries that you would want. This is a fully loaded S7 basically with all of the different packages. You have the heads up display. I'm just looking at the speed limit and my miles per hour. You have all the information in front of you with the three screens as well. It's laid out super well. It's very intuitive. You can hop in this five minutes. You'll be able to go through everything. So once again, a huge shout out to Audi Greenville for providing this vehicle for me today. I will have all their contact information in the description below. And for your chance to win the Go Pro, all you have to do is be a subscriber to our channel and comment on videos. At the end of January, we're gonna pick the video with the most comments and pick a random winner from that video. So it doesn't matter what video you comment on, the more comments or the more entries to be able to win the camera. So that's all you have to do, be a subscriber and comment on our videos. We love engaging with you guys and commenting back, seeing whatever the comment is. Uh, it's always fun to interact with you guys. So that's all you have to do for the giveaway. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a huge thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video.